As well, of course, the Coote story continues to rumble on. Uh, we've heard from all manner of different people this morning, including uh, Alex Salmond, who thought that the King uh, should perhaps apologise to Nigel Farage uh, on behalf of Coote, which is the bank for the royal family, uh, because who else could be better to apologise? He's already had an apology from John Sopel, uh, the Ertzatz uh, former BBC man, uh, who now spends more time uh, defending the BBC, it would seem, uh, than when he was actually working for them. And also, the BBC have yet to apologise for what they did. Uh, Coots are now trying to claim, basically, that they did not uh, issue um, the uh, cease and desist order to Nigel Farage on the basis of his politics. Uh, it was for another reason. But I think that uh, particular goose has flown, has it not? Uh, let's have a word with Rod and see what it's all about. Rod, a very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Cooked. Yeah, cooked. I the mean, goose. the goose the has goose been well and truly cooked. Um, yeah. Cooked. You might want to rename Coots as cooked, actually, because they seem to have gone from what was once a relatively, you know, not particularly well-known bank, but very posh organisation. Yeah, uh, they've, sort of, they've sort of kiboshed yes. themselves. They've shot themselves in the head rather than in the foot. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if, if, it, if it's lasting damage for them. Well, I, I sincerely hope so. I hope they all lose their jobs mm. uh, and are cast onto the scrap heap of oblivion. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I would like to use this opportunity to ask anyone who's watching this who may have a bank account with Coots uh, to, to, to remove it. Yes. Well, I did, I did, I did say this earlier on to, to uh, uh, one of our earlier guests who said that uh, he said exactly that. I said it's a bit like Donald Trump when he was banned from going to um, Nobu, the restaurant uh, that Robert yeah. De Niro owned. And he said, well, luckily, not many of my supporters can afford to pay $300 for a steak. Uh, I think similarly, many of our viewers and listeners will not uh, probably be able to have an account at Coots because they're not posh enough. Well, no, indeed, indeed. But, but Nat West are culpable as well, of course, being yes. owners of Coots. Uh, and, of course, we are culpable because we own Nat West, or we own a third of it. Right. Um, uh, you know, we bailed them out uh, back in 2008 uh, through their uselessness, and now they're showing a different kind of uselessness, largely a consequence of their chief executive, by the look of things. But, it, I mean, we could all argue about this, but it is horrific. Mm. You know, I would find it as horrific... If Owen Jones was banned from... Of course he would, yeah. It, it, it is just utterly odious. But, but I wrote about this two weeks for the, uh, for the Times, mm. uh, and the lefties came on and they said, oh, it's nothing to do with, uh, uh, with his politics, it's, mm. it's financial reasons. You know, um, they were all nothing. certain, weren't they? They were all absolutely certain. So a bit of humble pie from them wouldn't come amiss either. Well, I have uh, rather enjoyed John Sopel's grovelling apology this morning, which I presume uh, was... Oh, part what did he say? What oh, did he say? Oh, he's basically... Uh, I, will, I will give you the quote uh, as I can. He, he put it out just about... Uh, 10 o'clock um, this morning, just before our show started, he basically said, Dear Nigel, uh, I always believe when I get things wrong, I own up to it. Um, I got it wrong. Sorry. That will teach me to be to trust the reporting of my old employer. If your political views were even part of the reason why the account was suspended from Coots, that is totally reprehensible. John. Yeah. He's not a bad lad, John Sobel. I don't blame him for sticking up for his for his friend uh, Hugh Edwards. We all stick up for our friends, don't we? Well, um, sometimes. But, I, I mean, I think the problem for, for Sopel is that he was so kind of um, gloating in his delight that Nigel Farage had had his account suspended and he tried to make out uh, that it was because he didn't have enough money. And, you know, um, yes. it, it shows you really what the difference is between people like yourself and, and, and myself, who would be considered by them to be on the right. You know, I would defend Owen Jones uh, against having his account um, as, uh, absolutely killed off, but they would not defend Nigel Farage. No, that's right. And, and of course, the, 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 the same thing happened, of course, during the Hugh Edwards business. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, it immediately became the left suddenly decided that this was a way of attacking the sun and therefore found anything that Hugh Edwards uh, allegedly did perfectly reasonable, mm. <laughs> which, is, which is bizarre when you think of, the, of, of what would normally happen if someone like that and if the allegations were true. Yeah. The, the, the level of exploitation of young people in there is something which usually sets the left off in a, in a fervour of, of, of loathing and hatred. Yes. But, oh, yeah, no, but because you work for the BBC, it's private. It's private business. It's nothing yeah. to do with you. We don't even need to know about it, frankly. No, that's right. That's right. It's shocking. But the, the, the Farage stuff is truly shocking. And, yeah. of course, we know now uh, and have known for a, for a couple of weeks that it's not just Nigel Farage. Mm. Uh, there are the daughters or, or offspring of a couple of Tory peers. Yeah. 
who've been told they can't have bank accounts because they find their because the bank finds their father's uh, uh, policies problematic. Why why these banks can't just get on with instead of uh, robbing us like they usually do uh, by not paying us the the right rate of interest for our savings? accounts uh instead of genuflecting to any fashionable cause that comes along because they are terrified of the campaigners mm. i mean this is this is what's behind it the 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 manic campaigners none of whom must have jobs because mm. they are so busy uh continually bombard all the top companies with with uh, with injunctions don't have anything to do with the spectator don't have anything to do with nigel farage don't have anything to do with that ghastly rod middle all that awful mike graham yes uh, and and, uh, and and the the companies succumb because they are gutless and in their social mm. media offices are staffed by uh, vapid teenagers who don't know the, the truth of freedom of speech yeah. and freedom of expression. Yeah, they don't know the difference between um, a flexible mortgage rate and a gender-neutral toilet, to be honest. But, I mean, I was delighted this <laughs> month uh, when I was able to see that with the rise of interest rates due to the Bank of England's complete and utter uh, incompetence, that I was able to make something like £2.51 on my savings account so uh, you know trebles all round or rather not i mean it's not even yeah. enough to buy a pint of beer you know yeah i mean you see why they do it don't you because they are hated institutions yeah and they're institutions which we all accept rob from us uh, and don't treat us very well yeah. close down our branches mm. take out the atms try to make life as difficult as humanly possible right. and so the next stage in that uh, is to actually withdraw their facilities from uh, people who, whose, uh, whose opinions they probably secretly agree with. Right. <clears throat> a lot of these people, I suspect. They're just scared stiff. Mm. It is. Uh, but also, is it not a very good ex explanation and a kind of uh, exposition of how far the wokery has gone in this country? You know, because people sometimes say, when you get involved in, you know, conversations about, you know, trans-inclusive language and, you know, those yeah. in favour of it all will say, oh, it's only words, what's the problem, what's the difference, what are you so worked up about? And then we find out that people are able to actually peddle nonsense about Nigel Farage, like, for example, that he may have been singing songs from the Hitler Youth when he was a child. You know, if you believe that, you know, I mean, I've got some swampland in Florida to sell you. The fact that he's friends with Novak Djokovic, I mean, the horror of being friends with an international uh, superstar tennis player. You know, the fact that he's friends with Donald Trump, a freely elected, uh, uh, democratically elected president of the United States of America. You know, these are all black marks, apparently. Well, no, they also called him, what did they call him? They called him a grifter. Yeah. I mean, a bank calling someone a grifter. I mean, there's, there's irony for yes. you. Uh, I mean, I think I think Nigel Farage should, should sue them for defamation because, of course, this has been public. This is libel. It's been it's been published to a third party. Yeah, uh, uh, and it was published to a third party before uh, Nigel Farage got his hands on it. Mm. Uh, but I, I think I think more is. I, I noticed that Rishi Sunak and indeed a couple of uh, Labour MPs voiced their uh, disquiet about this. Uh, Rishi ought to take a bit of action. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I would actually close Coots Bank down if it does that for, for discriminatory yeah. reasons. Imagine if they discriminated against a client because he was a Muslim and they didn't agree with the Quran. Yes. Imagine what would happen. Um, you know, heads would roll immediately and yeah. the bank would close down. Well, so this is, possibly, this is... possibly literally. But I mean, you know, the point is yeah. that in the, in the end, um, this is a situation where the, the taxpayer owns a third of this bank. You know, there seems to be some responsibility there that they should at least, for the purposes of, 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 of doing what their shareholders want, they must do away with these ridiculous rules, mustn't they? Yeah, of course they must. But, and don't forget, it's not just Nat Western Coots, because I notice that Farage has also tried to open accounts with various other high street lenders and have been turned down on every occasion, despite having the money, mm. because they don't like his politics. Or because a few of these imbeciles in the social media unit don't like the policies and they, they have sensitivity people telling them uh, you know that they mustn't be exposed to the to the odium that would occur if they if they uh, if they took the account of someone who had a perfectly sane view about mm. transgender issues rather than you know the the post realist uh, uh, ideas which they peddle themselves it's, yeah. it's, it's but it's obnoxious 
And it's another step towards totalitarianism. And as you say, the left always says, oh, this doesn't happen. It's a storm in a teacup. This isn't a storm in a teacup. It's an assault upon freedom of speech and it's it's totalitarian. It's as simple as that. It is. And interestingly enough, in the Times, they've got a whole sort of a dossier on the dossier, if you like, and it talks about how many left-wing publications are quoted uh, in this dossier yeah. that Coots have, including Hope Not Hate, which is a ludicrous organisation, uh, and also the political... I've always, preferred, I've always preferred hate to hope. Yes, I have. I mean, Kevin O'Sullivan <laughs> and I have had these conversations regularly. I mean, there's nothing wrong with hate. You know, you can no. have love and you can have hate. It's fine. Yeah, whereas, whereas hope, I find, is deluding. But there we are. Well, I mean, they always say that to Tottenham fans, isn't don't they? It's the hope, yeah. it's the hope that kills you, you know. It's the hope uh, that kills you, yeah. But they've also got left foot forward and the Labour movement for Europe as, as sources. I mean, this is a banking organisation. This is, I mean, the, the, the sort of ludicrous irony of these socialists defending coots doesn't seem to uh, um, actually register with them. It's an utter absurdity, isn't it? And, uh, I mean, clearly what they did, they set out to get rid of Nigel Farage and then cobbled together as much evidence as humanly possible mm. to do so. Uh, they, they were never in any doubt that they should get rid of Nigel Farage because they thought it would improve their brand. Mm. Uh, the only thing I can think of to improve their brand is to close. Uh, <laughs> because, I mean, none of us have... I mean, you haven't got a bank account at Coots. Of course not. You? No, I mean, uh, I used to walk past it, because it used to, I don't know if it still is, it used to be in the Strand, and I used to yeah. stagger past it at various points, uh, sober in the morning, not so sober in the afternoon, um, and wonder what went on in there, because it was kind of a mystery to me. It was like a merchant bank, you know, when I was a, a teenager. Yeah, no, absolutely. My, my sister yeah. went and worked in the city, and she became a very wealthy a commodities trader. I still don't really understand it, what they do and how they make money. Uh, and bizarrely, she used to work with Nigel Farage on the foreign exchange desk at, uh, at Drexel Burnham Lambert before they got all arrested for being criminals. Um, but I used to walk past Coots and sort of peer in there and go, what, is, what do they do in there? Why is it so special? <laughs> but, I, you know, I've never even considered having an account there. They <laughs> launder money. I remember when... <laughs> I remember when uh, my magazine, The Spectator, the magazine I worked for, uh, had, a, had a special pull-out supplement, uh, would probably sponsored by Coots or someone like that, but it was for, for luxury goods. Right. Uh, and, it, and it was all aimed at the very people you're talking about, <laughs> and it was called You've Earned It. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was known universally throughout yeah. The Spectator offices as You've Embezzled It. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly right. Yeah, I've managed to come up with a plan. I'm going to sell you something that doesn't exist, which you'll never take uh, yes. possession of, um, and then I'm going to make a load of money doing that, and then I'm going to buy it back from you next year and make even more money, and you'll never have ever seen whatever it was. That seems no, that's to me right. to be right. it, the it, way it, it all works. It is. Well, this is this is the, the parasitical side of capitalism, isn't it, I'm yeah. afraid? I'm afraid uh, so. 